At an early age, I grew up out here on this property. I was not surfing. I knew what the ocean was, obviously, but I was essentially just not into surfing or boogie boarding or anything yet. I just was out here helping my parents in their shop. I didn't really do much in the way of what my life led into. My name is Nate Tyler. Is that good? That was pretty good. I didn't get to grow up in like a little beach town or anything. Templeton, for the most part, was um, was pretty centered around like football, sports, um, a lot of agricultural. So it was it was different than like where my head was at. But like I said, it was all I knew. It was like where I went to school, total home or whatever you'd say. See, I became a surfer because my dad surfed a lot, like back in his younger heydays. There was like a, a for sure, like a cowboy crew. There was like a football sporty crew. And then there ended up being like four of us that were just essentially wannabe surfers. You know, it, it became like a real thing where it was like, my dad was like the guy that would drive my, all my friends surfing. He, he got like a, a group of us to actually start being able to be at the beach every weekend and like started that like passion where all of a sudden it was like, whoa, whoa, like that's all we want to do is like be in the ocean, you know? In no way, shape or form was it like your typical like really overbearing, pushy parents like, oh, you need to be this surfer or whatever. They were actually the opposite of that, but they were supportive if that makes sense. I think I was 19 and I just felt like I lived up in Central California and there just wasn't much going on up here. So I moved to Orange County with them and was hoping like, maybe I'll just get seen a little bit more. I'll live by where my sponsors are at and whatnot. And, um, and that was great, it was, it was good fun, but I don't know, there was always that like little bone in my body that just felt like it really wasn't me down there. And in no negative way, it just wasn't the way that I grew up at all. And I don't know, just outgoing and in everybody's face. And if you were gonna make it or do whatever the hell everybody does to make it, it just it was really unnatural to me. So I ended up just sort of disappearing back up here. It wasn't like a, like a by design thing, like, oh, I'm gonna go back up there and just disappear. It was just more like, well, shit, I'm just gonna go back up to where I grew up because that feels like it's more of the way that I should live. I love the summertime when there's little south swells and it's just foggy. Like I love the fog because I know my little zones that I go, I wait for my tides and there's not much change throughout the day. You just, it's, it's really tide dependent. You know, where we live is really open to the elements. It's like, it's windy, it's cold, it's rugged. And there's essentially two seasons where it's like I put my head down and I'm surfing as much as I can. And then there's two seasons where it's windy as hell, cold as hell, and I'm just like surfing if I can.
like when a wave is really glassy and you hit like speed pockets on it. That's a crazy feeling that I don't think you would get anything else. I oddly love paddling into a crazy wedgie wave. I don't know, so I have these weird days where I'll like be driving around home, especially this last year when I haven't been able to travel, and I'll like see the wind kick up just right and like just weird little waves rolling in. It's like revert so hard, like mentally I'll be on the backside of worrying about all that stuff, and then I just like a psycho, like just like, oh my god, like who can I call to come film and like how do I get that going? But I don't know, I've just been enjoying like our home, our land, my family, like artwork, all that other stuff. First cover of a magazine came from a photo trip in 2004 or five. Right around there was a, like a Tom Carey trip. That was really cool, but it was essentially, it was like any other photo trip where it felt like a fluke, like, oh my God, I nailed the craziest photo, it came on the cover. And then it was like, there's nothing really there's no real substance behind it. I started writing for Globe and met Joe G and started to go on those film trips. And that was like a huge point for me where it just like all of a sudden felt like, okay, this is the biggest opportunity in your life. And all you need to do is like capitalize on it. You know, it was like the first time I've really felt that. Like I felt a lot of pressure, but it was like a thing where I felt, it just felt totally normal, if that makes sense. And. Uh, I think one of the first trips we went on, Joe sat me down and reviewed the footage and I was paired up against like, literally my all time favorite pro surfers that I'd watch every single day. I was like sitting there surfing with them. I, I thought my level looked lower, but like I was just like there with them and it was just the craziest moment of my life. Like it just felt like, oh, that's just too much, you know? I built this shop in like 2014 in height of my travel years. And I didn't really know why I was building it, but it just felt like once we got this place back, it, it just felt like the right thing to do to like rebuild this shop. And I always have loved building shit, but it's like, I, I don't know what I was really building. So fast forward to nowadays, it's like I built that thing and I started messing around with metal and Kinetic sculptures, as my dad's always done that, and I've been like heavily influenced by that. And uh, now it's evolved into 
he's totally brought me in under his whole realm and just he's taught me every single thing and I can like build a sculpture from the ground up, finished product and he approves and it's pretty amazing. He's just like putting it in front of me, but he's challenging me to do my own thing and he's letting me succeed on my own too. So it's majorly influential to me. My family 100% is everything to me. I, I could not imagine not being who I am and not being where I am. It was like when this house came up for sale, it was like, well, yeah, that's really obvious. You should buy it. And then starting to raise my family out here, it felt like, okay, well, my kids are just going to hate it. They're going to have all the same things that I hate. But like, it's amazing because I watch my wife, my kids, they're just thriving out here. I don't know, it's just way different than the way I thought it would ever be. When I was with CI forever, it was all just PU, poly, glass. And then when I went over and started riding for Hayden, he does PE, so poly, foam, epoxy, glass. And these things are just like springboards. They're so, they just work so well around here. This board, was that new? This is like kind of short boardy. It was the sickest board ever for three waves and then I buckled it. I'll buckle. Ooh, this one. This one I'd say is my like ultra go-to. I'll unsheathe it here. This is probably like ultra airy board. Just an untitled. Dude, my whole deal was like reverse arch. Cause I don't really like an arch. But my idea was your heel and your toe feel this single pass. I think it kind of works. Some people have acted like they get it. Like when we started Octopus, the thing that was like my main motivation was like, let's make the best pads we can make. So overall, I wasn't like pissed at the surf industry. I, like I said a million times, like I just wanted like the thinnest pads. So that's what I set out to do. But it's kind of weird where it's evolved to is like, that was back 2014 when everything with the surf industry was just roaring. And we started watching like every single brand was not owned by surfers anymore. And it's the joke, like at the beginning of our videos, we put in like Octopus. We started with the world best surf company. And then, it, and then we like fucked around with it and we scratched it out and like world's only surf company because it, it got to that point where it felt like there was no surfers that owned companies anyway.
anything in the past with surfing and those moments where I was just like, I just wanted to create this video part, I wanted to get this photo and all that stuff, it's like, I always thought that was just gonna be like the apex of my life. But now like, there's family and then there's this art stuff and it's just like, all of it is like continued to grow and it's this beautiful moment where it's just like, okay, wow, this is like, I can continue to grow, but I'm just not the type of person that will sit there and celebrate it, you know? It, it, it takes like these rare moments where I step back and I look and I'm like, okay, whoa, this is huge. And I silently celebrate it and just go, okay, I'm still on that path, you know?